Welcome to Spotlight on the Arts. Hi, I'm Iris Acker, and I am your host tonight. I've uh, titled today's show, or the topic of today's show is From Chorus Boy to Choreographer. Intriguing? Wait a few minutes to find out. Let's meet our panel first. Karen Stevens, who's an actress and a writer. And we have Nicholas Richberg with us here today. He is the Public Relations Director for Zoetic Stage and an actor himself. Bill Hirschman is an arts journalist. I like the way it sounds, even though I forget how to say it. He has to prompt me every time. Uh, um, Let's meet our guest. Choreographer, producer, director, Bob Avian. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much. So glad to have you here again. Thank you. Had the pleasure before of talking to you on camera, as we say. A lot has changed, perhaps. Yes, it has, because you're doing something very special now that you're very anxious to do, very pleased to do. And last time, we, we did focus on chorus line, chorus line. But I would like to go back a little bit before we go forward. And uh, I mentioned Chorus Boy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm delighted when I say, I was a chorus girl. I never even wanted to get out of the chorus. I was so happy to do it. I loved it, too. It's some of the best memories I have. And all my friends were struggling to get work. And I could dance. And I got hired. And I was in a show. And it was a dream come true. Isn't that amazing? How yeah. do you be a chorus? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And we're I, all proud of it. We never live it down. No, I we know. We always I think know. it's the what greatest. What shows? What shows? Oh. Uh, West Side Story. Right. I was a replacement. Funny Girl. A lot of bombs. Uh, Jenny with <laughs> Mary Martin. Uh, Cafe Crown with Sam Levine. Oh, my God. What else? I did see that one. <laughs> oh, we, I think we ran one night. You know. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Hello, Dolly in <laughs> Carnival. And And, uh, it was fun, a lot of fun. And that's how you met Mr. Bennett. Yes, we were on the European tour of West Side Story, actually. I had done the show for a year. And when it closed, we did a European tour, and Michael joined us then. He was 16 years old. I guess I was (gasps) about 21. (sighs) And uh, we became fast friends. Isn't that a wonderful, wonderful beginning, an ongoing partnership as it was? Yes. He was my little brother and my best friend. (laughs) Okay, uh, but Chorus Line was not the first thing you worked on together, was it, really? No, the first show we worked on was Henry Sweet Henry, oh my. a 1967 flop based on the world of Henry Orient Yeah. with a, a tremendous team. George Roy Hill directed it, Nunnally Johnson wrote it, Bob Merrill did the score, all big guys, you know, <laughs> and... Uh, and Don Amici was the star. Don Amici, and, really? I don't know I where they it. got him, but he was the <laughs> star. <laughs> Don, today it's Don who? I know. know it, exactly. And Alice Platon, right? Yes, exactly. Yes. Mm-hmm. And then we went on to do Promises, Promises, oh, which well. was our first success. And then uh, Follies, the Hal Prince show, and Company, and oh, quite a few and, others. Uh, unbelievable. But Miss Saigon right. was yours. Yes, and Miss yours? Saigon was mine, Sunset Boulevard was mine, and a few others. Uh, I got sucked into working for the Brits for about 13 years, and I, <laughs> I did a lot of shows over there, and they were very good to me, and I had a very happy career there. Wow. Yeah. And that I'm glad of. We're talking about um, uh, Miss Saigon because I notice you say staging by, the program says. They're not using choreographed that- by. That was because when I was originally hired to do the show, they really didn't see much choreography. Uh, They saw some uh, huge vocal sequences, and they really didn't hire dancers. I had one guy who was a tenor, but he could be an acrobat. So I made sure I got that in. And every time I did the show, I kept, which was a lot, we did it around the world including several companies in America. And uh, I kept on enhancing the dancing and enhancing uh-huh. the dancing. And then when we would start auditioning, I had to make sure everybody could dance before they could be hired. And I just came back from London recently where I did the 25th revival of Miss Saigon. 25th, it, 25th, I want everybody to 25th, 25th revival. Yeah, revival, sorry. <laughs> and it's a dance show. 
And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, and it, it turned out great. I'm very proud of it. And we're hoping that we'll see it hopefully in New York. Yes, hopefully. Uh, you know, New York, coming into New York is a tricky situation because Miss Saigon can only play like one or two theaters in New York because of the size of the stage and the capacity of the audience to pay for a big production like that. Yeah. So you have to wait for the theater to be available before you can make the commitment. And I know Cameron McIntosh, our producer, wants us to go to LA first and probably Toronto before we come into New York. Yeah. But we've just done Tokyo again and we're about to do Seoul, Korea. And I think we're going back to Germany again. And, you know, when I was a kid and we did a hit show, you, maybe you did a tour. And if you were really big, you did London. Mm -hmm. Now, if you have a hit show, it's global. And it's in every language, you know. Mm -hmm. Please God. <laughs> <laughs> How else has the, has the show changed in any other ways besides being more dance heavy? Uh, we have a new song. A lot of the uh, recitative has been changed. And it's gotten grittier and uh, a little more uh, darker, I would say. Mm. Because the show was more romanticized 25 years ago. And now, you know, the world's... A funny place, and so <laughs> still has a helicopter. What, oh yeah, you got to yeah. deliver that, on the helicopter. That's, the, that's <laughs> a must. And, but it uh, stands up. I mean, I know it so well. Yeah. I mean, there are all of your shows, promises, sunset. Yeah. It, they're, they're still being done because they can be. Yeah, they they're pretty big shows. Yeah. The, Broadway uh, today is a much different place than it was when you started out. Yeah. Um, what, what do you see has been the most, the biggest changes and how has it affected the way plays are produced? I would say the numbers. Um, it, it's all about the numbers now. When I was a young dancer, we had a dancing chorus, we had a singing chorus, right. you had a, producers, you had a <laughs> lot of scenery and a lot of costumes, and tickets were a dollar eighty, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and now when you cast a show, you try to get a chorus who can do it all. Mm. just so you can get the numbers down. And you're playing these concrete, concrete shells with limited seats. And so they keep raising the ticket prices to mm -hmm. extreme uh, levels now to pay yep. for this, you know. So sh a lot of shows have gotten a lot smaller just to make the numbers mm -hmm. work. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it also... It's very hard to get away with the lightweight musical. And luckily, they do come along and they reestablish themselves. So, things to enjoy, whether it's a Book of Mormon, although it's outrageous in terms <laughs> of its language and its themes. Yeah, well. But, you know, it, musical comedy hopefully will still live. You know? <laughs> well, the best thing about Mormon is the choreography, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, it was yeah, well choreographed. And Newsies. You've seen Newsies, of I course. Have. Uh, I thought the choreography and that, do you agree or not? I mean, how do you feel about that? Oh, the choreography was sensational. Sensational, I have, yeah. Yes, and, and uh, I, I think things. that's what really made the show work. I mean, right. uh, mm. yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. But with ticket prices as high sometimes as $450 a piece, no, the yeah. audience expectations are <laughs> yeah. incredible. Yeah. How, what kind of pressure does that put uh, on you as a director to, to deliver whatever those expectations could be? Well, you know, it's tremendous pressure because you're trying to deliver an evening. And if, if you're a husband and wife with kids at home with a babysitter, you're driving into New York or wherever, and you're going to go out to dinner, you're going to park the car. By the time you're through, it's $1,000, $2,000. Uh, but people keep coming. You know, God bless the live theater. People keep going. And New York is different now than it was when I was a young dancer. It, it wasn't a city of foreign tourists. Now, when you're going through Times Square, very few people are speaking English, you know? <laughs> and uh, they want the popular shows. Mm. I think that's one reason why a show like Chicago keeps running and running and running. I don't think the audience has to speak English. They know what mm -hmm. it is. <laughs> it's done in review format. Yes. It's a lot of sexy bodies doing a lot of sexy dancing. It's interesting. I haven't and, and I think the, the, uh, foreign tourists keep that show running. And they have a familiarity with it, whether it's the film mm -hmm. or whatever. At one time when you did a film of a Broadway show, you never wanted it released 
when the show was running mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. it would kill you. Now it seems to work in reverse. When there's a <laughs> film of your show and you're still running, it seems to help you, mm -hmm. which is a new yeah, phenomenon. Exactly. Yeah. Not with chorus line. Yeah, that's there another you go. story. <laughs> <laughs> I know. How about that? Well, that's, well, that's yeah, yeah. interesting. Though. I mean, really, that's <laughs> interesting. That's a, movie musicals are, are so prominent now and coming back into yeah. into uh, the mainstream and are so successful. Chorus line being maybe famously one of the not as <laughs> yeah. successful as originally promised. Is there, has there ever been talk of maybe giving it another shot? Or? There has been, yeah. but we're afraid to give them the rights. Yeah, oh. we, a couple of us still control it. Uh -huh. uh, we, Michael Bennett and I were supposed to do the original Chorus Line film. I don't know if you know this story. Yeah. And we signed a four-picture deal with Universal and that was the wrong studio for us. It was about rubber sharks and bionic people. And <laughs> there we are at, at Universal Pictures, and we're trying to think of how to transfer this to the screen. And Michael thought, how do I do this? And he said, well, I know. We'll make the film about people who've done the show on stage who are now auditioning for the film version. <laughs> of course, oh. Universal didn't buy that. Oh, I you think know? that's very clever. Of course it was. Yeah. But, you know, they spent $5 million for the show like it was. But we were very unhappy in Hollywood, and we were developing a couple of pictures at once. And they were not being so sweet to us, and they gave us a hard time about a lot of things. And Michael just was, had come from New York as the king of Broadway, and there we are in Hollywood, and we can't find a parking place for our car. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so Michael said, I'm out of here. Let's go back to New York. And so Universal held on to the movie rights for a very long time. And they kept on going to Sidney Lumet, to Mike Nichols. <laughs> and finally, it wound it up. It's fewer in Martin's hand at Embassy Pictures. And they hired Richard Attenborough. <laughs> uh, I know. You know, who knows a lot about musicals, you know, <laughs> and it just, it just all went the wrong yeah. way. I've, I've been, we, we have an interesting audience in which some of our audience are theater insiders and others actually are just patrons and don't know much about the backstory and how things come about. One of the things I'm fascinated about is that Michael Bennett had a very high profile right. for various reasons. But what a lot of people don't know is that you not only were there, quote, assisting, but you were integrally involved in everything, to the point that the Tony Award for the Tony Awards for A Chorus Line and Ballroom are to both of you, not just one That's of right, you. Right, right, right. Can you talk a little bit about the work product, the way you guys work together? We had a wonderful symbiotic relationship. Michael was very driven, and I wasn't. And I didn't know if I wanted to be a choreographer or if I could choreograph, but we got very close when we were kids and dancing on Broadway. And once he started choreographing, he did his first show, which started in summer stock and luckily came into New York. It was called A Joyful Noise. It only ran a week. Right. But then when he did Henry Sweet Henry, because we were such pals, he asked me to work with it on him. And I wasn't a hired hand, I was his brother. So when he would ask me what mm -hmm. I thought about things, it was very honest. And we really loved each other and we'd have fun. We'd be on the phone all night, yakking away. And he never went anywhere alone. He'd go, we'd go to meetings and everything. He goes, now what did they say? <laughs> Just to make sure, but he was so smart and so driven. He had the ambition for the two of us. Yeah. And the key being, I never wanted to be him, mm -hmm. and he didn't want to be me. Mm -hmm. So we That's were a perfect mm -hmm. match. And I thought, if I go working off by myself, I'm not going to work with Andre Previn and Andre, uh, Alan J. Lerner and Catherine Hepburn and Neil Simon and Burke Backrack. Mm -hmm. You know, Michael had the drive, and I was always there in the, in the passenger seat. And it was a wonderful, thrilling experience. So was it difficult uh, when he passed away? Was it difficult to make the transition? Oh, my God. To being on your own? It was, first of all, it was all so sad and so terrible because in the beginning of his illness, no one knew. And we had dream girls running and uh, touring. And I sort of had to take cover the, uh, the process, so to speak, and hold the fort down. 
And then Cameron McIntosh got a hold of me and said, I want you to come to London and do Follies. And Michael, who was quite sick at the time, said, this is your good start. This is your good entree. Mm -hmm. You know the show, even though it will be a new version. You'll understand character, music, and everything. You won't have to worry about any of that. He said, just go do it. And while I was in London, Michael died. And it, it was all really tough. Very difficult. But then Cameron McIntosh got a hold of me, and I did like seven shows for him. And I did one show for Andrew Lloyd Webber. And so I spent a lot of time there. And uh, so I went from the uh, Michael Bennett years to the British invasion. <laughs> you know, I think of myself in three careers, my Broadway dancing career, the Michael Bennett years, and the British invasion. <laughs> and, uh, I think I was very lucky. I want to go back to my favorite story, is <laughs> that uh, I had been invited to the gypsy run-through of Chorus Line down at Joseph Papp's Theater. I think I told you this before. Well, I knew somebody yeah. in the cast who I just worked with <clears throat> got me an invitation. And I know, the, and he said, we don't know what we have. We have no idea that we could open and close tonight. You know, right. the gypsy. That's how insecure everybody was. We don't know. And after the show, now you have to understand a gypsy run through, everybody in the show is in the business. Anyway. We all rush the stage. Right. Do you remember that, Bob? Yeah. It was like unbelievable. It's just that we wanted to be a part of it. We wanted <laughs> to be, it was remarkable. It, I'll it, never forget it. it the, the interesting thing, when we were finally at the last workshops after a year and we were finally <laughs> running the show for people, our greatest fear was that it was going to be an inside show for people in the business. We had no idea if we would hit, hit the buttons of everybody else. And then Michael put a preface in the program that said, this show is dedicated to anybody who's ever marched in step anywhere. Oh. It was very <laughs> smart. Yeah. And, but some civilians started coming, and we'd see that they had the same reaction, which was thrilling, because we had no idea, really, until uh, we saw them crying, and then we were OK. Yeah. Donna McKechnie I've had on the show, too. Uh, and uh, she was telling me that what I'm telling you, we had no idea what we had. Right. That's just, we just didn't know. No. And you know, we were so immersed in it for so long. That's right. And it took so long to get it crafted and in shape. Because when you have 20 hours of material and you're trying to get it down to two hours in a cohesive musical, it's very tricky. Yeah. But when you, when you directed the revival a few years yes. ago, what did you bring to that? Were you trying to replicate it? Were you trying to give it a new spin? How do you I balance was not that? I was not trying to give it a new spin. I was making it, I was dedicating it to Michael. It's his masterpiece. It's his achievement. He, he conceived it, whatever. I did change a lot of things along with my partner, Peter Pulesky. We We rewrote a lot of stuff with the permission of the authors because there were a lot of references to dates, for instance, and it was confusing the audience when we were trying out in San Francisco. The, the kids in the cast would go, I was born in 1946, I was born in 1952. <laughs> we had to take that all out. Yeah. We say in the program 1975, but it was too hard for the audience to adjust to mm -hmm. that. Sorry. And we, we had to make some adjustments in terms of our references. And we did a lot of snippets along the way that just didn't work anymore in terms of the humor and the references. And uh, we rechanged some of the orchestrations, believe it or not. Hmm. And of course, a lot of the keys. But Marvin Hamlish was with us mm. and was very, uh, very helpful and very uh, wonderful in his help. Yeah. I think that's wonderful. The cast has gone on. The one that I know, Priscilla Lopez, uh, Frida Kahlo, uh, right. I'd seen her do. I mean, she, from, from, uh, and I heard nothing. You know, I, I related to that. Right. That's <laughs> why she went to the these directors. You know, she, yeah. do you remember that from Chorus Line? That oh, yeah. was, oh, I right. felt that I said, yeah, yeah, that was me. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. was me. <laughs> but uh, so I've been following her. Yes. Well, you know? she's had an ongoing career. Yeah. You know, yes, some of them wonderful. have not. Some of them moved to the suburbs and got married and had babies. And some of them have had fantastic careers, not necessarily on stage, but backstage, you know, as choreographers and whatever. By Ork Lee. By Ork Lee, yeah. Wayne Cilento, right. uh, you know. And, uh, but I just think that our audience now, when they go to see Chorus Line, which they will because it's here someplace again, 
or, yeah. or Sunset Boulevard or Follies, or they will say, oh, I saw the choreographer. Right. He was on a spotlight on the arts. There you you know, it is so okay. wonderful for an audience to be up close and hear the backside stories. Oh, thank you. Thank and it you. really is. It's, it's, um, it's, it's helpful for them when they see the show, and they'll go again. That they might not have a fault. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now I'll see it after you know hearing what Bob Avion said. I've been so fortunate to work on so many classic musicals. I never thought, you know, way back when, my life would be like this and would wind up like this. I'm very, very lucky. Is it hard to go back and see other productions? It is. How so? Yeah. It is because you remember the roots of everything, and then you remember the performances that were created by their specific talents, uh, their, their certain kind of voices and how we got mm. there. And then you see other people play those roles. But it's all about the material. If the material is good, it'll live forever. And uh, it should work for, uh, forever. Yeah. It, are, is there any project um, in the last few years that you wish you'd been a part of in oh, creating? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any hit. Any hit. Uh, any any hit. hit. I wish I'd been a part of. <laughs> That's great. Any that, any that you turned down that you wish you hadn't? Well, actually, no, I turned down Beautiful. Okay. And I turned down the new Gigi. I turned down the new jo Dr. Zhivago, but I was offered that like. 15 years ago, <laughs> yeah. and they're still getting yeah. it on. Wow. They're starting previews the end of this week. It took them that long <laughs> to get it up. I don't want to do a new show. It takes like two years to push that boulder up a mountain, and it's, it's a lot of work. And I do the revivals to protect my own shows. But I, I, I feel now I want to enjoy my life a little more. I, I consider myself retired until the phone rings and I, and I have to go and do one of my old shows. But I really don't want to do a new show anymore. <laughs> little things here and there. Mm -hmm. the, the, the revivals, do you adapt them to the new casts or the exact replicas of the You original? always adapt them in some form along the way, mm -hmm. whether it's just a key change or Certain material would work better if you make certain adjustments mm -hmm. to it to suit the actor or the actress who's mm -hmm. playing the role. And you always adapt it visually in scenery and lighting mm -hmm. and costumes. Yeah. Yeah. We give a plug to the Miami City Ballet because you're such a supporter. Are you on the board of directors? Uh, board of trustees. Board of trustees, yeah, which yeah. is even above that. And um, you can appreciate, obviously, um, splendor for us performances that they do, yeah. do they not? Well, I was trained as a ballet dancer, yeah. and so my technique lies in that area. And I see these beautiful people on that stage, and mm -hmm. you know, I relate so totally to them. And uh, yeah, and we need Miami City Ballet down here. You know, they're rated very highly in America. Mm -hmm. I think they're rated Absolutely. like number fourth in America, four in America. And I, I urge everybody to go see them. Thank they, you for that. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm with you. Yeah. I'm with you. Uh, unlike you, uh, I was forced to take ballet. <laughs> <laughs> I, was a, I was a tap dancer. But I cannot thank my teachers enough because I, I was never a hoofer. I was always with yeah. the Paul de Bras. And uh, in fact, I was in a class with Gene Kelly and didn't even know it. Wow. And he was in a Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's Court at the time, and Vera Ellen. But I was a kid. It was um, a professional class. And they just threw us all together right. kind of thing. When I found out from um, Gene Stanley, is that his name? Yes, the top teacher. Okay. Oops, I think I was named that I wasn't, now you tell me, oh my <laughs> yeah, goodness, yeah. Right, right, right. But you notice that the style that Gene Kelly dances, that's right. how I was, right, it was sure. wonderful. But yes, ballet is necessary, isn't it, for all? Well, some sort of technique, so you know how your body, how to control your uh, body. Are you still well, hands on when you're yeah, but I have great assistants, okay. <laughs> and I say, that looks great. Let's do it to the left and jump on your head three times. Oh, yeah, we'll use that, you know. You don't, you don't personally demonstrate the opening of I course line? I do it. No, no, no. We have, so, we have like Five, over 10,000 people who have done the show, yeah. so they know yes. what it is. Yeah. But South Florida, you've made it your, uh, you're a snowbird. Right. That's what you are. And... Um, I hope that you agree that we really do have some fine theater down here that you can enjoy. Well, each year gets stronger and stronger Good, and stronger. It does. It and, does. you know, between the ballet and the theater and the, uh, the national tours that come through, 
we support as much as we can down here too and try and see as much as we can. And it keeps getting stronger every year. And we've gotten friendly with so many of the actors and directors and, we and thank producers. You for that. That's nice. Yes, so we try too. to certainly support it. Well, I hope this was a treat for our audience as it was for us just mm -hmm. to have you. Yeah. Well, thank really you so much. It was fun. This is like our third visit. Yes. And um, I learned something from you different every single time. We always <laughs> say, this program is really educational. Oh, good. If not for the audience. <laughs> At least to us. It's for the panel, if not. So we thank you once again. Thank of course, you. I thank our panel, and I always thank you. I thank you for going to the ballet and all the dance shows. And of course, I always encourage you to please go to the theater. And if you want to know what's happening in our world of theater, you can just go to floridatheateronstage.com. It's all there. And we're glad that you're all there and that you're here today. Thank you again.